Across the pantheon of life on Earth, there have been countless evolutionary attempts by some groups of organisms to copy what has worked in other organisms. Mimicry is the highest form of flattery, and when it comes to life on Earth, it happens so often that there are entire fields of study dedicated to understanding the hows and whys. This mimicry is especially common in the micro world, where there are hundreds of thousands more species of animals than at our macro scale. Spiders are frequently subject to these sorts of evolutionary trends, and I happened to come across one genus of spider that just so happened to evolve to mimic one of the cutest insects around, the weevils. So let's take a kinder at these adorably stubby and shiny spiders and see what makes them tick. Tamerlan Thorell was a Swedish arachnologist who was hugely prolific throughout the last half of the 1800s, naming over 1,000 species of the little eight-eyed freaks. In 1881, he published a huge volume describing a bunch of spider species, and among them were four new species of a new genus of jumping spider, which Thorell named Cocorchestes. According to his work, it seems as though the Latin is meant to translate as jumping pill. Parsing through the genus name, Cocorchestes, has allowed me to find some roots within. The cocci being the first root referring to pill, due to the spider's shape. Cocci also refers to pill-shaped bacterium, seeds, or carpels that all have the same sort of shape. The last root is likely to be some form of the Latin orchestra, or its ancient Greek ancestor, orchestra, which refers to the space on which people danced and sung. This is likely in reference to the jumping ability of the spider. Since his description, there have been over 40 species named for this genus across the South Pacific, specifically Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Australia, and New Britain. Here's what these spiders look like. Are they not the cutest damn things you've ever seen? Lots of people have the irrational fear of spiders, but it seems as though the 6,000 species of the jumping spider family, Salticidae, may have become an exception to the rule. They are some of the most intelligent, agile, and cute spiders on the planet, with short, compact bodies, often fuzzy integument, incredible acrobatic abilities, short, flat faces decked out in two pairs of giant forward-facing eyes for incredible depth perception and cat-like mannerisms. Another aspect to their character that make them slip by arachnophobia for many people is that the majority of these spiders are incredibly small. The largest individuals of the largest species of jumping spiders barely even breach the one-inch mark. That record belonging to the aptly named giant jumping spider, or Hylus giganteus. Almost all of them are too small to break your skin with their fangs, and even those big enough to do so have venom so mild that you wouldn't have much of a reaction anyways. The only spiders that rival the jumping spiders in cuteness might be the much larger and fuzzier velvet spiders of the Aresidae family, but they are not closely related to the jumping spiders, despite some minor shared similarities. An interesting aspect of the jumping spiders is their propensity to evolve to mimic the appearances of many insect species. There are ant, mantis, and beetle mimics, but there are a ton of spider species that mimic different species of these insects. Ironically, there are also moths that mimic the color patterns of jumping spiders too. Obviously, the ant mimicking jumping spiders are probably the weirdest ones here since their bodies have contorted to appear like six-legged insects with antennae and stinging abdomens. However, the cutest and least expected mimic among the salticids, and possibly one of the least commonly known, is that of the 40 species of Cocorchestes. They mimic some of the smallest weevils. In biology, there are a bunch of different types of mimicry, but describing them all is beyond the scope of this video. The types of mimicry we should familiarize ourselves with for understanding these spiders is defensive mimicry and aggressive mimicry. There are a few types of defensive mimicry, but in general, it describes a non-dangerous animal mimicking a more dangerous animal to avoid predation. Aggressive mimicry is employed by parasites and predators to avoid detection from their prey or host. 
So, now that you understand what these concepts are, let's take a closer look at the Cocorchestes species species to see how it may apply. The 40 species of Cocorchestes all seem to mimic teeny weeny weevils, hence why they all share the traits of being tiny, at no more than a handful of millimeters in length, and being compact with hardened shells over the cephalothorax and abdomen sections that appear like the waxy hardened shells of beetles plus carrying legs capped by white or semi-translucent feet and lower legs to appear as though their legs are shorter than they are. They also have short stubby mouth parts that they seem to hold towards the center of their face to copy the proboscis of weevils. Now, the immense list of species here indicates differences in weevil species mimicry, and you can tell this occurs with the few images of other species sporting slightly different colors. Some are pitch black and some are red like Cocorchestes spark. I'm sure they come in all sorts of colors, but only images of the glossy black ones are easily accessible. I mean, hell, even some members of the Cocorchestes farius species mimic the dimples of the weevil's thoracic exoskeleton. That's what I call dedication. Biologists are not yet certain why these spiders mimic the tiny black weevils, but there are a few possibilities. One is that they prey on the weevils and are using aggressive mimicry to get close enough to the long-faced beetles to chow down on them. Another possibility is that they are defensively mimicking the weevils. Beetles are some of the hardest bugs on Earth, with the strongest among them able to survive being run over by a car. Therefore, they are not the easiest prey items in the world. Mimicking tiny weevils as a tiny jumping spider may allow these critters to avoid the drooling eyes of larger predatory arthropods, who may think twice about wasting time and energy on cracking a nut. A third, perhaps slightly less likely possibility is that the spider only coincidentally looks like the weevils. Under this line of reasoning, both arthropods converged on this body type in order to be tough tiny pills too hard for most other bugs to swallow. This one seems the least likely because the jumping spiders seem to have too many features that the beetles have as though they are mimicking them to an exact science. The end of the spider's abdomen even ends in a stubby point that curls slightly upwards as in the weevils. In fact, I have yet to see a spider mimic as exact as these weevil spiders. Unfortunately, not much else is known of these guys. It's not known if they catch and eat weevils, hence why the aggressive mimicry thing is a working hypothesis. If not weevils, then probably some other sort of teeny bug. Some species of ant mimicking jumping spiders eat the eggs and young of jumping spiders that have a natural aversion to ants. The mother will leave her brood if she sees ants around her. Such an example shows you that not everything that mimics another thing is doing so to sneak up behind them and take a bite. Nature is weird and convoluted like that. So what do you think of the weevil spiders? Cute, huh? I want a plushie of one for sure. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.